What's good, YouTube? It's KB, Just Do Boxing, back with another video. I want to talk about a potential fight that could happen in 2022 at some point. A happy new year to all the good people out there. So let's get into it. So we got King Ride, Ryan Garcia, potentially, versus ESAT Pitbull Cruz. Now, Ryan Garcia, 21 and 0. 18 KOs, 23 years old, 5'10", 70 inch reach, Pitbull Cruz, 22 and 2 and 1, 15 KOs, 23 years old as well, 5'4", 63 inch reach, and you know, as far as Ryan Garcia goes, you know, the last time we see him in the ring, he got a TKO victory with a left hook to the body over Luke Campbell in the seventh round back in January 2nd of 2021. You know, uh, Ryan Garcia himself was also dropped in that fight in the second round, you know. He, sh he shook it off and responded well. He, he showed some heart, some grit, you know. And, you know, Garcia, you know, he went on, he went on Mike Tyson's podcast called out Tank Davis. And as we all know, that fight never took place because he then, out of nowhere, mysteriously claimed that he had this opportunity against Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao to fight him in a, you know, a legit fight, which we all know never happened and it wasn't true, you know. Then he was also supposed to face Javier Fortuna which when it came time to do that, he claimed he had anxiety issues. So, you know, he didn't have that fight. So his next opportunity, he was supposed to face Jojo Diaz. And, you know, conveniently, he got a hand injury. So, you know, we've seen this time and time again with Ryan Garcia, you know what I mean? He's called, he seems to, be calling out Pitbull Cruz right now, you know, saying, you know, sign the contract and things like that. And, you know, we've seen this story before several times in the past with multiple fighters, you know. Like I say, went on Mike Tyson's podcast, had him FaceTime Javante Tank Davis just to get on the phone and say, you know, if he doesn't fight, if Tank doesn't fight him next, you know, nobody's gonna take him serious. His career's over, some, something to that extent, you know, and Mike Tyson, you know, being a big fight fan, he is, you know, he sucked it up and, you know, he enjoyed it. He looked like a kid in a candy store, you know? And I think it's really disappointing for Ryan Garcia to go on, you know, you know, a Legends podcast and, and and, and not keep his word, you know. He, he seemed like he never really had no intent on fighting Tank. He seemed like he was just using his name for clout, as they would say, which is unfortunate, because Tank, on the other hand, he was willing and ready to fight Ryan Garcia when that opportunity came. But as I said, Ryan Garcia then switched his tune, claimed he was gonna have a fight with Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Like I said, that never happened. And then it also turned out that, that that fight was never even on the table. So I don't know where Ryan Garcia got that from, you know, but like I said, then he was supposed to fight Javier Fortuna and he had anxiety issues. Okay, gave him a pass on that. Then it was time for him to fight Jojo Diaz, which he didn't fight. He conveniently had a hand injury. And that, and you know, which Devin Haney ended up fighting Jojo Diaz and winning by unanimous decision. But like I said, you know, uh, we've seen this time and time again with Ryan Garcia calling the fighters out and not making the fight happen. And it's, it's Pitbull Cruz on the other hand, you know, he said uh, Ryan Garcia hasn't done anything dangerous at the 135 pound division. You know, he seems to be more interested and concerned with being on Instagram than being a fighter. You know, a lot of people has echoed that same thought, you know, about Ryan Garcia, you know, as far as him, you know, seeming to be on Instagram and be more of a model or a social media presence or personality more than an actual fighter. He's, he's receiving a lot of criticism, 
and to some degree it was rightfully deserved because of him just as a man not keeping his word and continuously calling fighters out and and these fights never taking place and us just having to continue to listen to him you know more the same call out fighter after fighter and never makes it happen so I mean I think it's time to put up and shut up at this point I mean I think Pitbull Cruz versus Ryan Garcia is a, is a, is a hell of a fight I think I think it's a good chance based on the way Ryan Garcia is talking you know that he could be potentially underestimating this guy if they were to fight which would be a grave mistake and like I said, the last time we seen Ryan Garcia step in the ring, it was back in January 2nd. So if he were to fight Eastside Cruz for this year, this new year, it would be over a year that it's been since he's been in the ring. And like I always say, one of a fighter's worst enemy is inactivity, man. And if, if Brian Garcia were to make that fight with Eastside Pitbull Cruz. He was to show some ring rust. Ring rust mixed with, you know, Pitbull Cruz's style, the Bob and Weave, Mike Tyson type style, and that relentless pressure. You know what I mean? And just having a big heart all together and being a very competitive, tough fighter, I think Brian Garcia could find himself in trouble. And if he got dropped, by Luke Campbell, who's not known for a punch. To be a puncher, I, I definitely give Isaac Cruz a very good chance to touch, touch his chin. Because although Ryan, you know, he's very fast, very fast, good reflexes, I think he got some some pretty good real power. You know, he has real power and he has a real good, I think it is a left hook it is he has that's real good. But his biggest problem is you know, he's tall and he keeps his chin in the air. And you know, that would make it easy for a fighter that's shorter punching up to catch him on his chin, you know? And I think Isaac Cruz would be the perfect perfect candidate to make that happen. And I, I, I just, me personally, I want to see the fight. You know, I mean, Garcia, you know, he went on social media saying sign a contract. And, you know, he also went on social media saying how he would have did against Isaac Cruz and saying Tank gave him too much respect and you know he had Tank winning by only two rounds which is which is that's a complete joke I mean if you know boxing and you really was watching you know not being emotional or taking a fight that personal you will understand that Tank lost no more than four rounds and that's being generous you know what I mean I think people mistake a, a competitive fight for an extra close fight and it was more competitive than it was close. Tank won that fight convincingly and I think it would have been more convincingly possibly a stoppage had he not hurt his hand and which essentially looked like he, he broke his hand now at this point but I believe if had that didn't happen I think he would have hurt Isaac Cruz or he would have beat him even more convincingly. I just think the hand injury, you know, he wasn't able to do certain things. Obviously, you know, he couldn't use his main weapon. So he still showed, he showed a lot of dimension in that game, in that fight and on to the next. But not to go off topic, back to Ryan Garcia. Like I said, he, it's going to be over a year that he's been out the ring. He's coming in there against a little mini Mike Tyson with that bob and weave style. And it could be problematic for a fighter that if, especially if he shows any ring rust, you could potentially see an upset because I'm expecting if that fight were to happen, pretty much Ryan Garcia would be the favorite. Still undefeated, real popular. Pretty sure he'd be undefeated be, and being a favorite to win that fight, you know? But I think Isaac Cruz will be a live underdog if that's even something we can call him at this point because we all see him. I showed up to fight Tank. I think Tank is levels above Ryan Garcia. And I think, you know, Cruz would be a much more difficult fight for Ryan Garcia than it was for Tank. I don't care what anybody says. Like I said, I think Tank is levels above Ryan Garcia in terms of maturation and where he's at right now in this point in his career. 
think he's at a higher like I said, I just think Tank is at a higher level at this point in his career. I mean, you just look at the fights they had, you, you'll see it, I mean, it shows. All you gotta do is pay attention. If you've been watching both fighters, you'll understand that Tank is just at a higher level right now. And on top of being at a higher level, you know, he's been more active and he's been more of a man of his word, unlike, you know, Brian Garcia, with him just constantly, you know, calling these fighters out, mentioning their names, seeing for attention more so than they even fight them. So I expect, I expect to see him finally make a shift this year and start this year off, start 2022 off right, and be a man in his word and fight Isak Pitbull Cruz. I think it's a fight that will do well. I think the fans that get behind it, they support it. I mean, you know. We just want to see the fight. We want to see the best fight the best. I mean, we definitely want to see Ryan in there with tougher competition because the last few times, you know, he's been, been supposed to make step up fights. He hasn't done so. There's been one reason or another, one excuse or another, keeping him out of the ring. Each time it seems like he's supposed to go up against a quality opponent. It's always something. So hopefully that's not the case with this Isaac Pitbull Cruz fight potentially happening. And I hope as as a supporter of the sport of boxing that we get this fight, because that's something that we, we, we deserve. And I think it'd be exciting. It'd be exciting just to see the style matchup. And I honestly think Brian Garcia will have his hands full. I don't think it'd be easy the way he he's saying it'd be. I don't think so. I think that relentless pressure with Pitbull Cruz's heart and the fact that he actually has some good power. Ryan Garcia, you know, is not really defensively responsible. He relies too much on his speed, in my opinion, and he always talking about how fast he is and his power. You know, he's never really talking about boxing ability. IQ, if you listen to him speak, it's like he's enamored with himself. He's, you know, you know, hung up on his own hand speed. And he does have some of the faster hands in boxing. There's no doubt about it. And I believe he got some real pop. But I think he relies too heavily on those things. And I think he abandons the defensive aspect of boxing and actually using his skill and IQ as opposed to just using, you know, his athleticism being speed or power or something like that because I think he'll need a little bit more than that for Cruz, because I don't think Cruz, I know for a fact Cruz wouldn't come in there to lay down. He didn't lay down against Javante Tank Davis. He made it a competitive fight. You know, he lost a unanimous decision. You know, I think it would be a different outcome with, with him and Ryan Garcia. And then, like I said, styles make fights. So it's just something I want to see. So that's my thoughts on the matter. Until the next one. You know, y'all get in the comment section, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you're rocking with the content. Happy New Year to everybody. And as always, y'all get in the comment section and let me know if I gave King Rai Ryan Garcia and Isaac Pitbull Cruz their Just Do, because that's what I like to do over here, Just Do Boxing. To the next one, I'm out. Peace.